Hello, Tanya Laird here, and welcome to part two of lecture 16 of ENGR 231 Engineering Statics. In this portion of the lecture, we are going to explore some basic examples of applying the formulas of integration to solving uh, and finding uh, mo area moments of inertia. So moments of inertia, specifically area moments of inertia, but I'm not going to use the term area moment of inertia throughout this uh, lecture. Just because in this context, the moment that they're, like how we saw in, pre in the previous portion, part one, there is more than one type of moment of inertia. But in the context we're looking at here, we're going to be looking at area moments of inertia. So uh, the formula for moments of inertia or moment of inertia. Uh, first of all, Ix would be the moment of inertia with respect to an, a horizontal or an x-axis. And this is equal to the integral of y squared dA the integral of y squared dA, and then iy is equal to the integral of x squared dA. Again, ix is equal to the integral of y squared dA, and iy is equal to the integral of x squared dA. All right, so um, hopefully it's fairly uh, simple to see how we can apply these. All these are going to be, all these are going to involve is setting up a differential area or a differential element and working through, uh, finding your bounds and working through the integral. So the first one I would like to work through is uh, example one here. The moment of inertia of a rectangle about its own centroid. Of a rectangle about its own centroid. And this one is very commonly used in civil and mechanical engineering applications, especially in uh, structural frames and things like that about its own axis. Now, notice what I said about its own axis. See, the thing we'll learn, or one of the things we'll learn about moments of inertia is that the axis you choose as the point that you're taking the moment of inertia about matters greatly. Uh, it matters a great deal. Again, because you have a, or I, I might compare that to centroids, for example. If you have a, uh, if you have a centroid, or if you're trying to find the centroid, whether you are, uh, because you have in the centroid formula, the, uh, well, part of the centroid formula, the, the, the uh, first moment of area, that Q, for example, QY being equal to the integral of X dA. Well, if you shift your coordinate system, the coordinates of your centroid simply shift um, over that many units. So if you have one coordinate system here, one coordinate system here, and one coordinate system here, well, your actual centroid, it doesn't, uh, dramatically change in value. All that happens is if you move the, if I move the x-axis to the left two meters, well then the coordinates of my centroid increase by two meters. In other words, if this thing had a, originally had an x-coordinate in this system here of x equals one meter, if this was say two meters here, uh, now in this coordinate system, this thing would have a uh, x-coordinate of three meters. So there's a linear relationship as you move uh, the coordinate system around when you're working with centroids. So ultimately, the uh, that, and then we could we could interpret that as coming from this uh, relationship here, this linear relationship with x. But uh, the key thing to keep in mind is that moving your coordinate system doesn't fundamentally change your centroid. So moving coordinate systems doesn't really change the relative locations of centroids, for example. Uh, only linearly increases uh, centroids. Or uh, I should say affects centroids, because they could also decrease them, or the coordinates anyway, the coordinate values. Uh, only linearly affect centroids. Now, the coordinate system, or more specifically the point you saw moments about, or it's not some moments about, you take the moment of inertia about, I guess you could consider that summing moments. Um, but as we're going to see in this example, and well actually example one and example two, the axis that you consider or the place that you take the moment of inertia about is going to matter greatly for the final value of the moment of inertia of a shape. So consider a rectangle here. And since I'm going to take the moment of inertia of it about its own centroid, I am going to um, put the uh, coordinates like so. So I have the centroid of a rectangle here, and it's going to have a width b and a height h. A width b and a height h. But uh, again, because I'm looking for the centroid, sorry, not the centroid, the moment of inertia about the centroid, I'm going to put my coordinate system 
with the origin right through the centroid. So I have my x-axis here and my y-axis here. My x-axis and my y-axis. So uh, this is fundamentally going to be a basic integration. And so let's think about this. Uh, let's first get the ix, the moment of inertia, with respect to the x-axis. So ix, well, I probably want to get the I would probably want to get the coordinates of this. Uh, let's see, this point here has coordinates. Uh, well, that is going to be b over two, and comma h over two. This will be this point here will be b over two, comma negative h over two, because this whole thing is, has a height of h and the width of b. So the actual uh, bounds are going to be that divided by two. Uh, then this point here in the bottom left in the, in the uh, third quadrant there, this will have coordinates of negative b over 2, comma, negative h over 2. And then this point here will have coordinates of negative b over 2, comma, h over 2. Negative b over 2, comma, h over 2. Now, uh, I want to set up a differential element, and first let's get the ix. That is the moment of inertia with respect to the x-axis. And we remember that it has a formula, ix is equal to the area integral of y squared dA. So we have a y squared there, so that means we are going to need a, a horizontal differential element. At least we're not using any uh, modified integration forms, uh, etc. y squared dA. Uh, so if I uh, want to set this up, I would have a horizontal differential element with a, not a dx, but a dy. And for this particular shape, it's relatively simple because the width of that thing is just going to be a constant, basically b over 2 minus negative b over 2, and just a constant b. So the dA then is just length times width, or that's just going to be b times dy. b times dy. And ix then will be equal to the integral of y squared, uh, replacing dA with b dy. And I can pull that b out as a constant of integration. b times the integral of y squared dy. Oh, and most importantly, I need to include, uh, very importantly I should say, I need to include my bounds of integration here. Because we're integrating in the y, I want to go from the lower y value to the upper y value, and that would be negative h over 2 to h over 2. Negative h over 2 to h over 2. And negative h over 2 to h over 2 in this step where I take out the b. Uh, y squared dy. So then if I take that integral, I'd still have the b out front, and this would be uh, from, uh, that would simply be y to the cubed, or y, y to the cubed, y cubed over 3, evaluated from negative h over 2 to h over 2. Now I do actually need to run through this full uh, bounds thing here, bounds substitution. So b, times, uh, let's see, that would be, let me give myself a little more room here, uh, that would be h over 2 to the third power uh, divided by 3 minus negative h over 2 to the third power divided by 3. Negative h over 2 to the third power divided by 3. And then this would be b times, uh, let's see, that's going to be, uh, okay, think about this. This would be uh, h cubed over 8, but then divided by this, divided by the 3, that would be 24. So h cubed divided by 24, and then the same thing here, except this negative, but then we have a negative and a negative, so that would be h cubed over 24 as well. And if you add those together, that then comes to bh cubed over 12. And this right here is one of the most famous equations in basic elementary civil engineering, or basic structural engineering. This is the moment of inertia of a rectangle, and this is built into, or if, if, you're, if you're ever working to say a, uh, doing a lot of steel design or something like that, especially calculating moments of inertia for custom shapes or whatnot, you'll find yourself using, or at least as, uh, even if you're not doing that in industry, as you go through education, if you're doing any kind of steel design classes or something like that, you will see this formula quite often. As you calculate moments of inertia for uh, various 
I-beams or not I-beams, W sections or C channels or any number of things, uh, you'll, that formula pops up a whole bunch. Then we can also look at the moment of inertia of, in, in, with respect to the y-axis. And IY is equal to the integral of x squared dA. IY is equal to the integral of x squared dA. And so let's see here, that's going to be, uh, uh, just like we did with the other one, or just like we did with the uh, ix, we need to set up a differential element. And because we have an x in our equation, we're going to use a dx. A dx. And this thing would have simply a height of h. So dA is equal to h times dx. So iy would then be equal to the integral of x squared times h dx. And I can pull out the h as a constant of integration. Uh, and then this point I probably should put my bounds in. We are integrating with respect to x, so we're going to go from negative b over 2 to b over 2. Negative b over 2 to b over 2, and x squared dx. And when you work through that integral, you'll have h times, um, that will be x cubed over 3. And you would evaluate that integral from negative b over 2 to b over 2. And I could work through the rest of this, but this is fairly straightforward at this point. You do the exact same thing we did here, and you will get an integral of, uh, rather intuitively, since it's a simple rectangle, of h uh, b cubed, simply of h b cubed over 12. So just the basically the flipped version of this. And that shouldn't surprise us if we're dealing with rectangles. So uh, next, in example two, I'd like to look at the same thing, but maybe calculate the moment of inertia with respect to the base of the rectangle example two, and I think I'll only calculate the ix uh, just because I think we know how to work through the moment of inertia of a rectangle. I just want to show you that the point that we take the moment of inertia about really does matter. So example two, moment of inertia or find the formula for the moment of inertia of a rectangle about its own base. A moment of inertia of a rectangle about its own, or I should say about an x-axis at its base. So previously, I had the x-axis uh, and the y-axis going right through the origin. Here, I'm going to do the opposite. Well, not the opposite, but something different. A very different case. And... I'm going to have the or well, the centroid is still here, and I'm going to set the uh, axis, oh, maybe something like this. Since I'm only asking us to find the ix, I think I'll just go ahead and put it like this, uh, with the x-axis going right along the base of the rectangle. Like this. And this thing would still have a width of b, so the x-axis, a width of b at a height of h. And so this point here would be now uh, b comma h, and this would be b comma zero. So ix then, ix is still going to be equal to the integral of y squared dA. So we do need to set up a differential element, but this is actually going to be the same differential element, at least for this case, because we have a dy. And the width of that thing is still just going to be, you could think of it as, oh, that should probably say, um, actually those coordinates are, that's, that's, uh, that should be still b over 2 because we didn't shift the uh, y there. We shifted, yeah, we didn't shift the location of the y-axis. That's the y-axis there. That should be b over 2. Not that that's going to matter to this problem, but that should be b over 2. Anyway, uh, the width of this thing is still going to be b. And so this is our differential element and our dA is just equal to b times dy. So ix is then equal to the integral of y squared, uh, b dy. So very similar to the, to the last time, except our bounds of integration are going to change. We're going to have the integral from 0 to h. And this time, uh, times y squared b dy. And we, we, just like last time, we can pull out the b dy, or the b, the, the constant of integration. b times the integral from 0 to h of y squared dy. And then uh, if I work through this, I'll get b uh, times uh, y cubed over 3 
evaluated not from b over 2, but from 0 to b. And so that would then be, oh, sorry, 0 to h here. Uh, and so I'll have b times h cubed over 3 minus 0 cubed over 3, or just 0. And then the final moment of inertia is bh cubed uh, divided by 3. And remember from the previous one, uh, ix about centroid for the shape. The ix about the centroid. Uh, so this is the ix about the uh, base. The ix about the base is equal to, again, bh cubed over 12, but the ix about the centroid, or sorry, bh cubed over 3, but the ix about the centroid is equal to bh cubed divided by 12. So we see that there is a dramatic difference in moment of inertia depending where you take the uh, the centroid about, or so depending where you take the, uh, not centroid about, the moment of inertia about. Here we took it about the centroid of the figure. Here we took it about the base of the figure. So uh, when you are taking a moment of inertia of a shape, the first thing you have to ask yourself is, where am I taking this about? That is absolutely critical in order to uh, apply things correctly. So for example, if you are dealing with bending, uh, if you are dealing with uh, beam bending, you want to take the moment of inertia about the or about the uh, centroid. If you are dealing with something that is, uh, I don't know, like a, well, this would be more of a mass moment of inertia example, but if you had like a door, for example, uh, you wouldn't want to take the moment of inertia of that shape about the, the centroid. You would want to take it out the axis of rotation where the door hinge would be, for example. And so uh, where you take the moment of uh, where you take the uh, moment of inertia about is absolutely important. So even now, and we would find that if we took it uh, at a point, say like way down here, the moment of inertia would be, become even larger, just at, you know very very ridiculously large in some cases. So, but even just two points on the same on the sh same shape, one uh, and for the same shape, one positioned at the centroid and one positioned at the edge, this one is four times larger. This one is four times larger, because if you divide this by four, you get this formula. So these are actually four times larger. So we can see here that the effects of uh, position, we can see here the effects of position on moment of inertia. So, all right. So again, that will, um, again, I just wanted to, I think that'll serve as a good uh, brief introductory set of examples, and we will look at some more um, shortly. So I think that'll do it for this portion of the lecture. I think I'll have a second, uh, second uh, or I guess a third part, part three, where we look at some more advanced examples of this. I just wanted to first look at a basic, uh, a basic set of examples covering uh, the moment of inertia of rectangles and also, and also illustrating the concept or the idea that to where you may take the moment of inertia is absolutely important to produce the correct values for your calculations. All right, well, we'll, get, we'll come back pretty soon for part three of this lecture. Uh, there we'll look at some more uh, advanced forms of integration. I, I also want to show some uh, tricks you can use uh, to make the process a little bit simpler, if you, especially when you're doing integrals with the uh, dy term. Anyway, uh, please let me know if you have any questions. I will see you soon for part uh, three of lecture 16. Uh, Tanya Laird here signing off, and as always, thank you.